Hello, this is Barry Reisman at WWDB, welcoming you to another edition of the House Whisperer Show. Stay tuned for expert advice about maintaining your house from the roof to the basement and everything in between. We've got the guy who knows about it, the guy who talks to houses, and here's what they're saying back to him, professional home inspector Jack Milne. How you doing today, Jack? Great, Barry. It's another Sunday, and uh, man, I love this time of year. Me and, too. Uh, you know, after a hot, rainy summer, you know, just to enjoy these fall days, it keeps a smile on my face. So, well, uh, we'll, we'll keep smiling, and, and you're going to talk about a subject that is near and dear to my heart because of uh, the expense that I had to go through in, in taking what you're going to talk about down. You're going to talk about trees today. Yeah, absolutely, Barry. Today's topic is trees. We love them, but oh, the maintenance. But, Barry, you know, before we kick in, let, let me thank my sponsors. And, you know, I'm going to start with Tri-County Inspection Company. That's the company that I run, and we've been conducting professional home inspections now since 1985 and have served well over 70,000 clients. I'm going to give websites today because I think uh, with today's generation, they want to do a little bit more homework. Check out the website, which is tcinspect.com. Pass Blaster Barry, we're actually going to have Mike Hanner uh, visit us in the next uh, uh, two weeks and talk about how to prepare your house for the winter as, as to bugs and uh, rodents and critters and everything else. And their website is pestblaster.com. Barrow Exterminating, they're out of Glen Olden, Pennsylvania, very good uh, termite and radon testing company. Uh, their website is barrowexterminating.com. And, of course, Bucksmont Inspections, uh, they, they are the best when it comes to on-site sewage evaluation. And uh, their email is bucks, B-U-C-K-S, Mont, inspections.com. And, of course, brainflushgear.com, short, simple, and sweet. And I have been on the phone because of our next motorcycle trip. Uh, we're already uh, planning uh, that adventure, even though it's not going to happen until July. But uh, I'm always on the phone with those folks early to get the designs that I want to be ready for the trip. So if you're interested in anything like that, you can reach out to them, and they'll help you through the process. So, again, without my sponsors, I wouldn't be on the air today. And please, if you need anyone who's qualified in these parameters, you know, go ahead and reach out. So the email box, Barry, again, has been pretty busy. Um, <clears throat> and I appreciate the, getting the emails because it lets me know how, you know, what's going on out there in the real world, and I'm glad people are listening. But, you know, this one I got from Alex from Philadelphia. He heard uh, the, my show about Angie's List and Yelp, and he responded, I appreciate your opinion, but I have fairly good luck with these websites when we moved to Philly from New York, we did not have any, uh, or excuse me, did not have the benefit of a good referral source. They were, uh, they were friendly, they were resourceful, but with your show, I do appreciate the other avenues provided. And all I can say is thanks, Alex. You know, with any referral, you have to do your due diligence and follow up with research, and hopefully you can't go wrong. Um, if anyone's interested, uh, again, please email me at thehousewhisper at gmail.com, and I may be able to put your letter on the air. If you want to become a sponsor of the show, please reach out to me at 215-295-2030, and we'll talk. But today's topic is trees. We love them, but oh, the maintenance. So let's, let's think about this for a minute. You know, trees like humans, they start small and grow big, and sometimes too big. Adults may max out at about the age of 21 or so, but trees for them are just going to keep on going. I remember years ago when my dad bought the first Christmas tree for our new house, and he planted it in the corner. And, you know, granted, I moved out of that house when I was six, and but I always had the opportunity to go back into the neighborhood and, you know, reminisce. And here that darn Christmas tree grew well above the roof of the building, and I bet you they only cut that down maybe about four or five years ago. So they had that Christmas tree for well over 50 years. And uh, it's just amazing uh, how much it, it not only uh, cluttered the corner of the building, but really how much it also took away from the house. So 
and that's why I wanted to talk about this show. But the other thing, that, Barry, of course, this one's near and dear to your heart. Oh, that's for uh, sure. Uh, because we've been talking over the past several weeks about Barry, you know, removing some of his trees. And I have to tell you, Barry, this show is dedicated to you. Well, thank you. <laughs> me me and, my, and, and my former trees that I used to have. Well, we're going we're gonna to touch on that in a couple minutes. So let's take a step into the Wayback Machine when we planted our small oaks, maples, pines, sweet gums, or other varieties around the house. You know, and, and one of the things I think we take for granted are the instructions. Because even from the smallest plants, like tomato plants, all the way up to the biggest trees, they actually tell you where and how and, and why to plant certain trees, but also the growth rate. I'm not a fence guy, but I do like privacy, so I like Leland cypresses, and it's a very dense shrub, uh, but it grows about three feet wide and three feet high a year, so it, it offers the privacy, but you've got to make sure that, one, you plant them accordingly, two, you get enough sun, and three, that you fertilize them to grow the way you want them to. So the instructions, like anything else, are going to tell you how and where to plant the, how, the, to, to plant the tree for the optimum performance of that tree. Now, some trees hold their leaves forever, like pines and my Leland cypresses, or even like oaks. Oaks shed their leaves in the spring, but they drop their acorns in the fall. So if you're looking around now, if you have any uh, um, um, of these uh, oak trees, you're going to be the hottest uh, neighborhood for squirrels. They're going to come to your house, they're going to steal your nuts, and then they're going to try to find a place to, to harbor them for the, for the winter. Um, sweet gums. Uh, sweet gums give off, as I call them, dingo balls. Um, and they fall right before um, it's time to cut the grass in the spring. And you've probably have seen these things, because if you own a tree like that, they, they hurt your feet. And one thing I don't like about them is that they don't disintegrate. Uh, so I, I have a neighbor who has a sweet gum tree, and it's part, you know, right between the curb and the sidewalk. And every time that, you know, they fall to earth, they land on my side of the curb. Uh, so we've worked things out, and I help them clean them up. But when I, when I was going to build a garage back in 91, I had a sweet gum tree in my backyard. And I was, and, and, the, and the perimeter of this garage wasn't even close to the sweet gum tree but it came out anyway. Another issue is roots. You know, how about them? Oak trees have a deep tap root. In other words, they almost go straight down. But maples are a fast-growing tree with a very shallow root system. Uh, so strategic planting is required before you put the shovel in the dirt. Um, and let's talk about fall. I mean, why do they call it fall? Well, because that's when all the leaves fall off the trees. And I think autumn is probably a better word, but I haven't heard that word in quite a number of years. And, and fall is around the corner. But we're, we're now seeing the bright oranges, yellow, and brown leaves that will be falling everywhere and mostly into your gutters. And, um, you know, being a professional home inspector, I walk roofs every day for a living, but most people don't. You know, people say, how can you do that? And I say, well, I kind of see a roof like a mountain. You know, I have to climb it, you know, to see the view. But actually, later in this segment, Barry, we're going to talk about some gutters and gutter guards and, and uh, the type maybe to consider and types to stay away from. But, you know, with a roof, if you have overhanging trees, the following can happen. First off, shingle deterioration. The reason that we have granules on our roof is not only to provide color, but also to protect, uh, but to protect the felts that reside under those stones. So if you have a tree branch that's constantly rubbing across the face of the shingle, it's going to wear those granules off, expose your felts, and your roof will deteriorate it much more faster. As squirrels, again, squirrels, which I lovingly call tree rats, may access your, your attic um, from these tree branches. Uh, pest plaster, if you run into that, can help you get rid of them. And not only can they get rid of them, but they can make any repair. So if you're hearing any type of scampering above your head as you're trying to rest at night, uh, hopefully it's squirrels, but not raccoons. And raccoons are another big beast that uh, like to clamber across your roof if they're given the opportunity. And, of course, clogged gutters and downspouts can lead to water infiltration by your foundation and basement. Um, overhead electric.
electrical services that run between trees and branches can allow uh, for a power surge. And that actually happened to me way back in New, when I lived in New Brunswick in the, I guess it was the early 80s, 1980s. And I woke up to the sound of my alarm clock humming. It wasn't buzzing, but it was humming. And basically because the tree branch wore through this, that overhead service, it sent 240 volts into my home where all of our electrical devices are designed for 110. Wow. So anything that I had plugged in um, got burnt out. Now, the good news, bad news is, is that, you know, PSE&G went ahead and covered me for the cost of most appliances, but not all. And, if, you know, I burned out my stereo, and they said, well, what's a stereo worth? So they gave me, like, 50 bucks for a $400 stereo. So, you know, if you, I ask that, you know, this weekend, if you get the opportunity to walk around your house and take a look at your trees. And the utility companies don't want you up in the trees with a loper, especially when it deals with the overhead services. If you give them enough notice, they'll come out and they'll tree your branches away for free because you've seen the storms that we've had. And I'm not just talking winter. I'm talking all year round. And God forbid if something, you know, pulls your overhead service off your house, uh, it's not a good thing. And it's, it's an extreme safe, safety hazard. Uh, so, again, take a look at those overhanging branches and, and cut them back where you can. Believe me, they'll grow back, and it's not going to affect the... Um, the, the, the life of the tree. We'll be back right after these very important messages with Jack Milne, the house whisperer on WWDV. Life used to be so hard Now everything is easy because of you Oro Exterminating has been specializing in wood-destroying insect inspection and control for over 40 years. Serving Philadelphia and the surrounding counties, all inspectors are state certified and ensure providing their clients with professional inspections and treatments. Oro not only performs conventional termite treatments, but also handles special services like historic buildings and homes with wells, creeks, or ponds. The client is assured that all treatments will be performed safely when you hire Boro to do the work. They also provide radon testing in their service area. Boro's full-time office staff is available to help you schedule an appointment. Just call 610-586-5640 or send an email request to boroinspects at verizon.net. That's 610-586-5640 or email at boroinspects at verizon.net. Specially created t-shirts by BrainFlushGear.com offer the extreme sports enthusiast an opportunity to have a clothing line available that suits their sport. BrainFlushGear.com understands that when we get the moment where we can jump on our motorcycles, wave runners, surfboards, snowmobiles, or skateboards, it can be priceless. They offer custom artwork including silk screening, transfers, and embroidery. Speak to one of their consultants today and they'll help you create your own brain flush visit brainflushgear.com or email them at contact at brainflushgear.com for your septic inspection and testing needs, please consider Bucksmont Inspections. They've been serving the Bucks and Montgomery County areas for over 15 years. As members of the Pennsylvania Septage Management Association, the Pennsylvania Association of Sewage Enforcement Officers, and the Pennsylvania Association for Professional Soil Scientists, Bucksmont Inspections can inspect your existing septic system or test for your new septic system placement. Please call Rob Bowie at 215-666. 4213 and say you heard their ad on the House Whisperer show. As the weather gets cooler and the temperatures drop, the bugs might slow down, but the rodents don't stop. Mice and rats begin to invade homes during the fall and winter months looking for food, warmth, and a comfortable place to nest. Don't wait for pesky rodents to invade your home. Fight back. Have your home baited and ready for their attack with Pest Blaster. Whether preventative or a full-blown infestation, give Pest Blaster a call at 215-295-5555 and they can discuss the solution to your problem. They also offer humane animal removal services for a wide variety of wild animals, damage repairs, and cleanups. Call them today at 215-295-5555 or check them out at PestBlaster.com. Servicing both New Jersey and Pennsylvania. 
Pest Blaster, 215-295-5555 or PestBlaster.com for all your pest control needs. Tri-County Inspection Company has been providing professional home inspections, commercial inspections, and historic property evaluations for over 25 years. Tri-County Inspection Company covers 13 counties serving both New Jersey and Pennsylvania. They've performed inspections for over 70,000 clients and are members of the American Society of Home Inspectors, as well as the Pennsylvania Home Inspectors Coalition. They're licensed in both Pennsylvania and New Jersey. For all of your real estate transactions call tri-county inspections at 215-295-2030 for their new jersey clientele call 856-853-4224 in pa call 215-295-2030 in new jersey 856-853-4224 We are back with Jack Milne, the House Whisperer. By the way, you can hear Jack's program in several different ways. You can hear him on our www.dbam.com website on our podcast. And Jack, you also, you have a website, but you've got a bunch of programs on there. Where do they go for that? Yeah, Barry, thank you. If um, if you go to the housewhisperershow.com, uh, there's about 60 episodes now that cover almost every avenue of home maintenance. Uh, that you can come across, and of course, as time goes on, I'm building it. But uh, I think we're up to, we're almost up to date, except for maybe the last uh, two shows. So, yeah, go to thehousewhispershow.com. You can download any of them. You can sit at your computer and, and hear this voice all over again. But uh, again, I, this is your show. This is for my listeners. And any ideas that come your way, you know, go ahead and email me at thehousewhispershow at, at gmail.com. So, like Barry says, I'm the house whisperer, but uh, I have this little segue that says where every house has a story, and it truly does. And as a good home inspector, we not only look at the physical being of the home, but those things that also can affect it, and that's why today's episode is trees. So, getting back to it, how many of you have ever um, hired Roto-Rooter? Um, me? Like, me? <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you go, Barry. Yeah, Roto-Rooter uses a, uh, almost a chopper that goes through your, your sewer line because if trees and their, and, and their root systems get enough into your roots, of course, they, call, they cause backups. But the other thing it can do is literally crush your waistline. And then before you know it, you're replacing a sewer lateral uh, literally from your foundation wall to the curb. And, you know, there are specific trees that you want to keep away from your sewer laterals. And, and weeping willows um, are, are the one that come to mind. They seek out water. And in the back of my business, uh, I have a low area. And I did plant, plant a weeping willow there because they, they suck up so much moisture that it dries out the ground. But at the same time, they, they're, they're a beautiful tree. But the furthest thing I have from it is my sewer lateral. Also, if you have on-site sewage system, um, you don't want to plant any trees uh, over over that area because that's a thirty to a forty thousand dollars system that you may have in your front yard or your backyard. But when I sold my house in Huntington Valley in '85, my buyer actually planted two oak trees right over the septic system. And you know, being the good guy that I am, I came back to him. I said, "Listen, this is the last thing you want." Uh, in this area, and you know, I went by that house, I guess, last week, and those those oaks are probably a good four four to five feet around at this point. They're huge, but the tree, the, you know, the the house is 25 years old, so you do have to be very careful. Uh, trees close to your house can also grow roots directly against the foundation, and eventually may crack it. So again, anything that's very shallow, like your pine trees, um, cherry trees. Um, your maples, anything where you see a root that has to come close to the earth in order to grab enough water to make it grow, uh, you, you, you've got to keep those trees a good maybe 10 to 15 feet away from your foundation. Uh, and, and, and they have to be, in my opinion, specific types, that, like your slow-growing trees. I think um, 
like uh, a juniper, uh, is a nice tree to have fairly close by. Again, it's shallow rooted, but very shallow. They don't go deep, but they don't go wide. Uh, Japanese maples, I think, are a gorgeous tree, uh, you know, to use for ornamental purposes. Um, uh, oh, what's that one? It's a, um, a yellow rain tree. That's a really cool one. I kept that one out by my concrete. And, and the yellow rain tree, Barry, looks almost like a, a weeping cherry, but it gives off yellow leaves, and that tabroot goes straight down. I mean, straight down. So that's one of those few trees that you can put near concrete without having effect like you're running in, in, in with your home. So, um, again, large growth trees, keep them at least 10 to 15 away from the house. Um, remember in fifth grade where a teacher taught us that tree roots grow as wide as the fattest branches and furthest branches? I mean, there's a lot of truth to that. Township ordinances, uh, that's another one where I know Barry was required to grow certain trees uh, before he could move into his property, and same thing happened uh, to a, a good friend of mine, and it's a shame because some townships require a certain tree be planted between the sidewalk and the curb, or, you know, it's kind of nice sometimes to go down these communities and you see the oak trees uh, you know, that are now spanning, you know, literally across the road, and it gives you a bridge effect. But, again, it can have a, a, a real detrimental effect as to concrete um, and, and your sewer lines. And I, I think, unfortunately, they don't plan as to what happens in 15, 20, or 30 years because, again, it can allow concrete to lift. It can allow curb drains to back up. And curb drains are where... If we have a heavy rain, the water flows across the curb, of course, and then into the curb drains and goes to a, a crook, uh, a crook, <laughs> a brook or a stream. Uh, but again, you know, sewer and water laterals can also be affected. Uh, in Philadelphia, a, f a friend of mine had to plant pear trees uh, in order to get his use in occupancy, and I can tell you, folks, those trees lasted for 30 days, um, and then he pulled them. Um, and again, the other thing we talked about are, are gutters and uh, spring, summer, and fall debris. You know, be it the seedlings or the you know the broad leaves, the acorns, the dingo balls. All these things will end up affecting your gutter system, which it can affect um, your houses to uh, water infiltration at the foundation, ice damming. Where if you didn't clean out your gutters in the fall, and we get that initial um, uh, snowstorm like we have in a few of our past Octobers. If those gutters are clogged, that snow is going to back up into your home, and it's called ice damming. So it's really important that you get the appropriate gutter guard for your appropriate gutters. Now, most of our gutters, I think, today are what we call aluminum K or the box-style gutters, but um, they are prone to hold debris, and not only in the box themselves, but the outlet tubes, the downspouts, and, and, and especially our underground drains. Our low-sloped roofs have what are called eave boxes and roof scuppers. And believe me, if they get backed up, uh, that's a nightmare uh, because then the water can it becomes a swimming pool literally on top of your roof, and that can seep through and, and damage your home. They do make squirrel cages that go in your downspouts and the outlet tubes that help. Uh, sometimes there's a small bar I've seen roofers put across the roof drain because what they keep out are tennis balls. Tennis balls are the perfect size to go and block an eave box. And I got a great story. I mean, probably 15, 20 years ago, I'm doing a northeast Philly row right off Cotman. I go up on this roof. There must have been 20 to 30 tennis balls on, on these bunch of houses. So being the professional gutter ball retriever that I am, I look, kind of looked over the roof, and here's the kids playing stickball. So I asked them if they wanted their, their tennis balls down on the ground. And, man, it, like, I, I, looked, I must have been a god because it was coming <laughs> from, the, from the skies. And when I came down, uh, one of the neighbors said, were you on my roof? I said, absolutely, sir. I took probably 25 tennis balls off your roof. And so all of a sudden something that was negative turned into a real good positive for him. So let's spend a minute on gutter guards. First off, I think there's a real common one, which looks like half-round galvanized mesh with clips. Don't bother. Um, one, they don't lock well, and they fall off into your gardens. They can also stain your gutter and your capping. Uh, waterfall gutter guards, I used them for about 15 years, and when I redid my roof in January, they had to pry them off. 
they come in four foot and eight foot strips of vinyl. Um, they're good, but still the small seedlings from my maple still get by. I still have to flush them out twice a year. Uh, black mesh, uh, I saw that in the depot the other day, and it's designed to fit inside the gutter, but it still holds debris. Um, when I redid my, gut, my roof, I had my roofing contractor install something called Leaf Relief. I love the name, but it gets mechanically fastened and clipped to the lip of the gutter and goes up under the shingle tabs. And I'll tell you what, this, the holes are very small, so it allows the water to get by but holds nothing. Again, Leaf Relief, from what I've seen out there, folks, uh, that comes in eight-foot strips. You might have to have a roofing contractor put it on for you, but I think it's the best in the business for now. Uh, if there's anything that changes, of course, I'll keep you all informed. And finally, gutter helmet. Uh, that's a brand term, just like, you know, we use the word uh, clean extra facial tissue. It's essentially a covered guttering system. They do offer a, in quote, uh, forever warranty, but, you know, my question has always been, how long is forever? And um, I have spoken to a, quite a few clients who have them, and, again, they found them two, two ways, expensive and ineffective. Um, if we have a, a very hard rain, they do tend to overflow, uh, and there's still debris that gets behind them. And you know what the sad part is, is you can't clean them. Uh, so... Uh, if you're thinking of these uh, covered gutters, I would ask that you get referrals and, and, um, and, and give us some serious thought. Well, Barry, as always, you know, these segments go quick, but I try to keep them as crammed full of information as I can. I do like to close in saying, you know, it is Sunday, and Sundays are special. So please spend time with friends and family, and I'll see you next week on the House Whisperer Show. All right, well, that's Jack Milne. He is the man who talks to houses, and believe it or not, they talk back. So tune in again next week for another edition of the House Whisperer Show with professional home inspector Jack Milne. And to listen to previous programs, or if you have any questions, visit the thehousewhisperershow.com. Yep, Barry, um, just for my listeners, keep in mind, next week we'll be on roof maintenance. Uh, for the fall and the approaching winter, so listen in. La, 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 la.